Think gangsters are godless? Think again. Whether to ease a troubled conscience, secure a place in heaven, or guard against one's rivals and police, patron saints and deities are common in crime. Some are borrowed from mainstream religions, history, or folklore, where others are entirely new. They also range from good to evil, or at least to darkly immoral. Here are the world's top 10 from the least to the most fear inducing. Number 10. Nino de Atocha The holy infant of Atocha, a Spanish baby saint, is traditionally depicted with a basket of bread to feed convicts. As the patron saint of prisoners, he's popular with drug traffickers such as Pablo Escobar, leader of the Medellin cartel, who had altars in safe houses and visited a shrine while in Spain. El Chapo's son, Ovidio Guzman, also pays tribute. He was wearing an amulet of the saint when he was arrested in 2019. The holy infant is especially popular with gasoline thieves in Mexico, hence he's often depicted holding not a basket but a gas can. According to the Catholic Church, gangsters use images of the saint, or pseudo-saint really, to gain the support of the public. But in this case, it's probably the half-price gas that ultimately wins them over. Number 9. St. Jude As one of the Twelve Apostles, St. Jude is the only narco-saint recognized by the Catholic Church. He's also known as St. Judas Tadeo, St. Jude Thaddeus. Traditionally, he's the last choice to pray to for help, just in case prayers to Jude get to Judas Iscariot and said, the apostle who betrayed Jesus Christ. Being the last resort in a way, he's the patron of hopeless lost causes, first choice for criminal prisoners, youth on the edge, and fugitive drug lords like Benjamin Ariano Felix. In fact, so popular is St. Jude with the criminal underworld that police stake out his center of worship, the San Hippolito Church in central Mexico City. Once a month, thousands of devotees, including some of the best-known gang gangsters descend on the church and the boulevards around it, giving undercover cops with long-distance lenses the chance to update their photos. The saint who wears a green robe with a flame on his head is credited with all sorts of miracles, including keeping fugitives, thieves, and drug runners out of jail. According to the priest San Hippolito, however, criminals misunderstand. The saints will not help you do bad things or carry out illegal activities, he told Vice in 2016. On the contrary, St. Jude is also popular with police. Number 8. Amaterasu Sun goddess Amaterasu is the principal deity of Japanese mythology, daughter of the creators Izanami and Izanagi. Ruling over the Tagama no Hara high celestial plane, Amaterasu, whose name means shining in heaven, is chief of the kami, or spirits, and worshipped throughout Japan. She's also revered by the Yakuza, who honor her with rituals of worship as well as the initiation of new members. In one famous legend, Amaterasu retreats from the world to a cave, bringing disaster to heaven and earth. Different specializations of the Yakuza may worship other patron deities. For example, one of the two main branches, Takiya, merchants originally of medicines, honors Shino, the god of medicine, while the other main branch, Bakuto, gamblers, honors Hachiman, the god of war. All the Yakuza, however, honor Amaterasu and the emperor of Japan. An important ritual in which she features is Sakazuki, or cup exchange. Held in strict secrecy at a time and place not to be revealed to participants until moments before, the ceremony centers on an altar beneath three scrolls, each representing a god. Amaterasu is on the right, the emperor on the left, and Shino in the middle. Number 7. Jesus Malverde In Mexico, Jesus Malverde is the mythical hero of the poor and downtrodden. He's basically the Mexican Robin Hood, complete with thick black moustache and neckerchief. Malverde in Spanish means bad green, a name the folkloric bandit earned hiding in shrubs while wearing green camouflage to jump out and rob passers-by. Typically, his victims would be wealthy and the spoils would be shared among the poor, hence Malverde's other names, the generous bandit and the angel of the poor. He's also thought to have been a real person, at least by those who revealed him. According to legend, Malverde's real name was Jesus Juarez Mazo. Said to have lived between the late 19th and early 20th centuries, he was allegedly hanged by the government on May 3, 1909. Today he belongs to a tradition of narco saints prayed to by drug traffickers like El Chapo, who see in Malverde an image of themselves, especially in his home state of Sinaloa. There, a roadside shrine to the saint has become a popular place of worship. His image appears throughout Mexico, though on figurines, candles, keychains, t shirts, and so on. Number six, Guan Yu. The legendary general Guan Yu was a real historical figure, a loyal duke of the warlord Liu Bei. He's also a character in the Chinese literary classic Romance of Three Kingdoms. Also known as Guan Gong and Emperor Guan, he's become an important deity in Hong Kong with shrines all over the city. He even features in Hong Kong popular culture, including the Young and Dangerous film series. Statues of Guan Yu typically show him with a halberd in his right hand. But if you see one with the halberd in its left, it may belong to a triad 
at least according to rumor. While Guan Yu is worshipped by all sorts of people, from businessmen and policemen to simple private citizens, triads revere him as the embodiment of their most cherished values, humanity, honesty, obedience, wisdom, loyalty, and faith. He's also a reminder of their strict moral code. Number 5. St. Michael Mafioso are known for displays of religious devotion, with altars often found at their hideouts. The Catholic Church, however, to which this devotion is directed, has remained largely silent on the issue. Only recently have popes openly condemned mafioso. Pope John Paul II was the first, to which they responded by bombing several churches. Then in 2014, Pope Francis officially excommunicated associates of the mafia for occupational adoration of evil, but this hasn't stopped them. The Nadrangheta Mafia of Calabria, for instance, has two patron saints, the sword-wielding archangel St. Michael and the maternal Madonna de Palsy, or Lady of Palsy, commemorating a local apparition of the Virgin Mary. Nadrangheta leaders from all over Italy and the world actually used to gather at the Madonna's famous sanctuary in Calabria. Although different ranks in the Nadrangheta's complex hierarchical structure are each associated with a different saint, it's to St. Michael and the Madonna that members swear allegiance. This initiation ritual or baptism involves cutting a finger and dropping blood onto a prayer card of St. Michael or the Madonna, which is then burned and the ashes applied to the cut. Hence, in 2007, when a bitter blood feud culminated in the murder of six young people outside a restaurant, investigators found prayer cards and a statue of St. Michael, as well as images of Our Lady in the back. Number 4. Maximon Seeing some depictions of Maximon, aka Saint Simon, it would be forgiven for thinking he was Jesus Malverde. He often has the same mustachioed cowboy come gangster aesthetic. But this wish granting saint is a Mayan god, belief in whom dates back to pre conquest Guatemala. He's also a bit of a trickster. In one legend, fishermen asked him to keep their wives faithful, and Maximon slept with each one. Although Maximon's devotees are mostly Catholic, hence his association with Saint Simon, the church tends to see him as the devil and a worship of him as witchcraft. It's easy to see why. In one prayer for protection, he's conjured in the name of Satan, Luzbel, and Lucifer. His priests are chain-smoking drunks, often practicing in private homes surrounded by bottles of rum. But there's also the Temple of Saint Simon at Saint Andre Izzapa, a town in the Guatemalan highlands. This is Maximon's Mecca, a blue and white temple shrouded in incense. Pilgrims come from all over Central America to pour rum on Maximon's effigy and tobacco on its lap before praying for some tangible help, a new house perhaps, or protection from jail. Alternatively, they might ask the witches outside to place a curse on their enemies. Number 3. Born Samdi in Haitian voodoo, Born Samdi, aka Baron Samadhi, is in charge of the largest family of Iwa, spirits, the Gedi, who represent death and fertility. He therefore has unparalleled knowledge of the land of the dead. Whenever he leaves for the land of the living, he wears dark colored glasses that allow him to keep an eye on that realm. He's also depicted wearing purple and a black top hat and tails and carrying a long black skull handled cane. Baan is a trickster god, ridiculing the living with careless and offensive behavior. He smokes heavily, swears, is lewd and licentious, likes to eat black goats from roosters, and drinks intoxicants such as black coffee, vodka, and gin. He also drinks claren, a type of rum he makes himself with 21 hot peppers and which no other era can handle. Worship traditionally takes place from October the 31st until November the 2nd. This is Haiti's Festival of the Dead, or Fate Gere, during which death and sexuality are celebrated with songs, drumming, dancing, prayers, and possessions by Iwa. Baan Samdi and his wife Granny Briet are guests of honor. It's easy to see why Baan appeals to criminals. In 2021, Wilson Joseph, leader of the 400 Mawozo gang, actually dressed up as him, invoking the spirit to threaten politicians and police in a publicly recorded video. Haitian dictator Francois de Vallier also channeled Bao and Samdi. Like many gods, he appears in various guises, one of which is even more crime-specific. Baron Criminel, the saint of all criminals, is called upon to intervene in worldly criminal justice. It's said that when he appears, he forces people to question what's truly right and wrong beyond the law and who is truly innocent. Number 2. Karofo the Nigerian gang Black Axe, notorious for its email scams, is more vicious than many people realize. In addition to sharing templates or formats for scams on secret message boards, members known as Axemen share photos of their mutilated victims. They call these unfortunates Mugu or Mai, meaning idiots. At home, Black Axe is seen as a cult. Not only does it selectively recruit young men with few legitimate prospects, it also has an occult-style initiation ritual featuring savage beatings, symbolic rebirth, and an oath of loyalty to the 
gang. This is where Karofo comes in, invoked in words like, May Karofo squeeze life out of you if you ever betray the movement. The movement being the neo-black movement, NBM, from which Black Axe emerged. Often abbreviated to KRF or KF Online, Karofo is fairly nondescript for a god. It's not clear what he looks like or even what he does, aside from snuffing out life, possibly because he's only a few decades old. He, or rather it, appears to have been mistakenly identified in the 1980s. According to NBM's own research, Karofo wasn't originally a god at all, but an IAEA, underground cult. The traditional Yoruba incantation that mentions his name is Karofo the one which consulted the oracle about Olodomar god and declared that its death uh, would never be held off. Black Axe simply substituted its own name for Olodomare's henceforth venerating Karofo as protector. Number 1. Santa Muerte Unlike the other narco saints, Santa Muerte is not thought to have been a real person. In fact, she's the embodiment of death. Also known as Holy Death, she's portrayed as a skeleton in a white gown, carrying a scythe and a globe, a cross between the Grim Reaper and the Virgin of Guadalupe. Her devotees aren't all criminals, but criminals tend to be devotees, appeasing her with offerings of tequila, cigarettes, cash, jewelry, and corpses. Although she's often worshipped side by side with Mal Verde, only to her a human lives offered. One common practice among Mexican gangsters is to leave severed heads at her shrines. They also pray to her before undertaking hit jobs. And the cult of Santa Muerte has been spreading. Authorities in the US have recorded a number of Santa Muerte killings, as well as bumper stickers, tattoos, altars, and cash bands adorned with images of the saint. In Las Vegas, there's a whole sanctuary complete with life-size effigies. Since 2000, when her popularity took off, Santa Muerte has accrued upwards of 12 million followers. This makes the cult one of the fastest-growing new religions in the world. And while the Catholic Church has officially condemned her worship, calling it blasphemous and satanic, they're reluctant to deal with it further, probably out of concern that many prefer her to the Pope and would rather leave the church than Santa Muerte.